Hello and welcome to Auto Inform Diagnostic Feature. My name is Frank Massey. Over the next few issues, we're going to serialise various elements of our training courses to give an insight to both process and procedure. I hope you enjoy this feature. I'd like to begin by, in effect, an overview of what Common Rail is, um, how it's evolved, um, where it's at now, and some of the opportunities that diagnosing these systems presents as an independent repairer. Common Rail, in effect, is in two distinct parts, hydraulic functionality and electronic control. So the skill sets here are slightly different, perhaps, than would normally be discussed on petrol, although obviously there are hydraulic issues with petrol injection. The big difference is pressure. There is a quite extreme pressure in common rail, anything from 1350 bar up to around 2200 bar. So there is a great deal of respect required when dealing with these systems, although there is, with a careful process and procedure, very little or no risk whatsoever from physical damage. Process is important, the correct tools is important, and the understanding of system schematics is important. As with all of our foundation courses, the purpose of this course is to introduce process, procedure, choice of tools, and functional knowledge of the system. So with that in mind, what I'd like to do now is move on to component identification. Let's have a look at some of the components with which we're dealing so that one of the, the core responsibilities before beginning any diagnostic process is identification, identification of the type of system. One of the advantages of common rail is that the actual functionality doesn't differ by a great deal from one manufacturer, say Bosch, Delphi, Denso, uh, th than any other. That's an advantage in terms of process and procedure. And in many respects, the actual tools required also are quite similar. So perhaps unlike some of the other diagnostic challenges, many of the tools that we use are common throughout all the manufacturer groups. That also, as an, as an independent, is an advantage. The other focus of the foundation course, in fact, the Common Rail course, is to introduce some very innovative, challenging methods of testing. Traditionally, as a commercial business, we've always challenged set procedure. We always challenge stated process. We always challenge the tools that are available. We've modified many of our tools and modified a lot of the process. And, and the purpose of that is to get the best uh, results, the most um, accurate means of testing in the shortest possible time, uh, removing any, any um, misdiagnosis risk and to be as flexible as possible, as I've already mentioned, across a whole range of different manufacturers. So let's take a look at some of the actual components. As I said, we're going to follow quite closely the face-to-face -face course notes so that um, there is, um, you, you have a choice um, of supporting this programme with further face-to-face -face training. I'd also like to mention that there are other training material which we produced, which would sit very nicely and support this course. The foundation module brings into play basic process and procedure with some other tools. So uh, we'd recommend that particular module. We we'll also um, have produced a module on DPFs and turbo testing and a module on serial communication. These modules go into greater depth. The focus of this module is to concentrate purely on functionality and process in the common rail as a standalone subject. That said, let's take a look at, in chapter two, at some of the components. So what I'd like to do is just um, move to one side the notes and get some components together and we can then discuss the evolution of common rail. Welcome back to chapter two. In this chapter, I said we're going to take a look at component identification. I'd like to begin, perhaps, by just reinforcing the, the two uh, most important different elements of common rail. I mentioned hydraulic functionality. And the electronic control. And the choice is, diagnostically of course, is to establish where the problem lies. Now, this module is designed to reflect the process and procedures that we've adapted and evolved in our commercial repair business. But we're going to begin component identification 
with the hydraulic side of things because in my view the core objective of common rail is to generate hydraulic pressure the electronic control in effect is a slave to that end object remember the the, the core um, diagnostic process and in fact just to recap uh, because this as I say is covered in the foundation notes but I think it's worthwhile if we just go over this process to introduce it and you can see how some of the elements in the foundation course lend itself to this particular uh, module when you test any system you always begin with the output stages now the ultimate output of common rail as I've already said is hydraulic functionality the correct generation storage and delivery of diesel fuel the next stage in, in the process, the logic um, process, is request or inputs. In other words, if an output functionality isn't correct, you need to look at the request. Is it being asked to perform that function correctly? And I call it request. Now the request can be information from a sensor, request can be a switch, request could actually be a coded signal. So Although the explanation of request is quite simplistic, behind that statement can be um, a rather complex set of events. And in some case, requests can be several events which have to be in place in order to get the right uh, output. For example, in order to get the right hydraulic functionality from common rail, there are various inputs, load, speed, temperature. So all of those components have to function correctly. And we'll be looking at those in some detail during the actual module. After request, um, we need to look at um, if the component is controlled electronically, the control device, so we've got, we've, the, we've got an output stage, we've got an input stage, all electronic components require power on ground and, and especially in the case of common rail, if movement is part of the functionality, then it requires current with which to drive it. So I'm going to begin with a power supply and a ground reference. and current ultimately is the objective of the power and ground. Now, if, say in the case of a diesel injector, you want to test it, we go straight for current. We would not check power or ground initially. Current is much easier to examine, much easier to access, and would be the first component test. So in other words, if the output of a fuel pump, which is hydraulic, wasn't correct, then we check the current supply to the pump in order to ensure that its, its basic functionality electronically was in place. Next on the list, if the current uh, or voltage or ground, of course, is faulty, continuity. It could be a wiring fault. Very obvious statement, in which case you can check voltage drop or um, resistance through a circuit. After continuity becomes environment, Now you might think, well, well, okay, what do I mean by environment? Well, diesel injection is a pretty aggressive environment. Um, there's an awful lot of carbon and deposits generated as part of the process of combusting diesel fuel. And it's causing a lot of problems with mechanical systems. Just one quick example. This particular component, and you can see straight away some of the difficulties. This component, are these are swirl flaps or induction control flaps. This is off a, a BMW. And you can see this has been replaced because of the extreme amount of carbon deposits that have been caused by combustion and EGR. EGR recirculates part of the combustion process back into the intake system. That's actually bad news, because with it comes this contamination. Now, that contamination affects the mechanical functionality of this component. So the environment is responsible, and the environment in our case is the exhaust gas combustion process. So environment is a big issue with, with common rail diesel and has to be taken into account. In other words, if you have an output problem, perhaps a DTC, don't necessarily blame the hardware or replace the hardware without 
considering the cause or the environment which has actually caused the problem in the first place. Another excellent example, DPF. DPFs have big issues. We're going to talk briefly about DPFs later in the module. So there's an example of environmental problems. And the final consideration, also a very important one, is software. Now, where does software? Now, software comes into play in a number of uh, different areas. Software can be the extraction of data. Software can be readaption. Um, software can be literally a flash program update. In other words, a modification to the operating program from which the output stages operate. This is quite common now in vehicles, so software is an issue. So having repaired, let's say we've repaired a DPF problem and we've treated the environment, um, we would then need reset adaption on, say, the differential pressure sensor. So there's an example of where readaption may be an issue. An air mass meter fault, of course. Having repaired and replaced a component, that we should then readapt uh, the software in order that it begins with a base value. So software covers a number of issues. And we'll be looking at the software platform later in the module. I hope you've enjoyed this feature and we'll continue to follow the series throughout the various magazines. For further information on face-to-face -face and DVD training, visit the AutoInform website or call the phone number on the screen. I look forward to seeing you in further issues.